What's up, Interweb fans? <laughs> All right, Interweb fans, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about my favorite CLI tools. What do I mean by CLI? I mean command line interface. These are tools that you use in your terminal. Now let's take a look at the first one. Uh, it's called ripgrep. Uh, on the command line, it's you use RG. And what ripgrep does is it allows you to search quickly through a lot of files all at once. This is super useful if you're working on any kind of code base. If you're a programmer and you're looking for different strings and things like that, uh, ripgrep is the tool that you want. I used to use Silver Searcher, uh, which was another one of these type of tools that allow you to search on the command line really quickly uh, through files and stuff. Uh, but RipGrep is really, uh, I think, the fastest one in terms of the amount of files it can search and how quickly it searches. Also, it has really good defaults. With Silver Surfer and some of these other ones, you had to use um, a lot of different parameters or options to say, I don't want to search my git ignore files, I don't want to search node modules, and things like that. So in my case, I'm going to search for my name. And through my entire code repository, which is all my projects, and probably, you know, 20, 30 gigs of files across everything, um, it searched very quickly, and then found all the different uh, instances of my name in all those files. Now, as I'm looking through these different uh, command line utilities, I'm going to be using one throughout. And this other one is called TLDR, or TLDR, <laughs> as it's sometimes referred, which is funny. Um, so using TLDR, or too long didn't read, uh, and I type in RG for that, it will give me a summary of all the common commands used for that particular CLI tool. So in case of ripgrep, uh, as you can see, by default, you can use RG space and then the regular expression you're searching for. Uh, if you want to opt out of the usual defaults that it uses, you can do RG dash dash no ignore dash dash hidden, and then it will search almost everything for a particular pattern. So if we did that and did this, see how it searches everything, including node modules ignoring using git ignore and those kinds of things. So in that way, it takes a long time. But by default, searches the things you're probably looking for. So if we look back, we look at some other uh, examples, um, maybe you want to search for all files that are named Kevin. RG files Kevin. files pipe rg Kevin ah so all the files named Kevin which is great super fast searches really quickly TLDR <laughs> it uh, shows you the simple help page for the command line tool that you're using. I use this all the time because I can't always remember all the options for all the different command line tools that I use. So, for instance, um, let's think of one, git, obviously. So here it shows you the commonly used git commands, or for you poor souls still using subversion, there's, there's a page for subversion as well. Um, but useful things are like curl. Like I use curl a lot. Um, sometimes I don't even remember how to do a post or a get or how to send data or different headers and those kinds of things. And I can do a little TLDR curl and then show the right thing. Or maybe I'm using the remove tool. I'm like, e is it, how do I do different pads all at once? That kind of thing. Or if you remember the XKCD where it says, you can't remember the 
uh, tar command, well, guess what? You can look at the tar command and see what what it is to extract that thing, and it's XP. That's what it is. Let's talk about another one that I use all the time, which is not just Git on the command line, but if you're using GitHub, which I do a lot, they actually have a CLI for themselves as well. And that one is GH. So if I do uh, TRGH, you can see all the different things you hear, use here. And this one's super useful because I used to go to the web interface and then create a repo, set up my settings, and then clone it down and that kind of thing. With the GitHub CLI, you can do all those things in one go. It even like walks you through some of those things. So if we did um, embryo create, so do you want to create one from scratch? Sure. What do you want to name it? I want to name it Foobar. Uh, what do you want to put it under? If you happen to have multiple organizations, I'll use my usual one. Hey, hey, this is my new repo. I'll make it public. Uh, yes, read me. Would you, sure. Uh, let's assume it's Rust. Uh, sure. And then BSD. Sure. And yes, I do want to create that. And do you want to clone it locally, all in one go? Yes, I do want to do that. And then, if you look, we got Fubar over here. And if we go into GitHub repo, we could do repo view web. And then it brings up the actual repo that was just created. Isn't that pretty cool? I love this. I use this all the time. In my current place of employment, uh, I use um, the GitHub command to look through PRs, to clone that PR, um, to sync a repo from one to another. I do that a lot because um, we do kind of inner sourcing and those kinds of things. So you can do get GitHub repo sync, GitHub repo PR list. There's a lot of really cool things. Or even, cool thing too, even in the CLI, you can pull up the web page for particular things, whether it's a pull request or something else like that, which is great. This other one I'm gonna talk about is kind of a, a one-off thing, but it's pretty cool. Um, I like to use it for instances where I'm kind of like figuring out a new repo or trying to get the gist of what's going on uh, in a particular one. Um, so I'm gonna go into one of my repositories that is much older. And this command line is called OneFetch. And if I run it on this, you can see what it does is it tells you what the repo is mainly made of, like the languages. In this case, it's HTML because it's outputted a lot of those things. Last time it was changed, the authors, uh, the number of commits, um, the URL, the remote, um, and all kinds of different things that are super interesting. Wow, I created that 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Um, so I like OneFetch a lot because uh, it's kind of cool to see the different um, at-a-glance statistics of a repo very quickly. So I would just check out another one here. This one's Rust, shows, shows the logo of the crab in the left-hand side. Says that it's Rust, shows you that there are four dependencies, the authors, number of commits, lines of code, all those kinds of things. Very handy uh, every once in a while when you're looking at new repos, and I'm looking at new repos all the time, you know what I'm saying? Ooh, look at those repos. So those are really cool. Let's talk about uh, another project that I really like. Oftentimes you're going from one directory to another or you're visiting very particular direct directories on the command line and uh, you want to get there really quickly. You may have seen me already use it a few times. So instead of like CDing up and then going down to a different one that like this kind of stuff. If you've visited the directory before, 
there's this um, there's a CLI called oxide which it's it's uh, CLI is just Z because you don't want to type if you type it a lot you don't want to type a lot of characters so what this does is it basically as you visit directories um, it keeps a list of them and then sorts them by how quickly you visit them so if you happen to visit something a lot you don't even have to type the whole directory name see I typed zkev and it went to my cabin directory because it knows I visit that a lot um, let's see let's try what about this one yep it was a Kevin Ridgway website in this case so this CLI is super useful when you're visiting directories very quickly or moving around a lot um, I find it really useful and much quicker than trying to CD different things or having your own aliases for different directories and those kinds of things this makes it a lot easier and automatically knows what directories you've visited and after a while learns them and then you can start visiting them very quickly by just typing a substring of what that directory's name is. Super useful. JQ. If you touch JSON at all in your day to day, this one is a must have. JQ, JQ is like the standard for being able to parse, format, manipulate JSON uh, from the command line. Oftentimes, most recently, what I had to do is take this one huge blob of JSON, which was thousands of lines of JSON, convert it to a slightly different format and put it somewhere else in the code base for some kind of lookup. And if I didn't have this, I would have been hand editing that JSON file the entire time. But instead, I could pipe the JSON to this tool, tell it to grab out certain fields or only show me certain subsets of data or objects or arrays within that JSON um, and cut them out and put them somewhere else or write them out to a different file. Absolutely amazing tool to use if you do JSON. All right, so that's it for some of, some of my favorite CLI tools that I use in a day-to-day. -day. Uh, some of these may be useful to you. I hope you can add them to your tool belt and use them day-to-day. -day. I think you'll find them be very, very useful. Uh, if you want to check out more of the things I use, check out uh, the link below in the description. I'll have a link to my .files repo where there's a lot more things that I am using day to day that you may want me to cover. So let me know in the comments if you want me to talk about any other CLI tools you see in there or any other ones you want to talk about.